All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number one of the third series today. We've got Marine Lord up against Lucifron. Abbasid Mirror. Beastie, how are you feeling about this game? All right, let's look at the uh, look at the map a little bit, see what we got. Um, I mean, Abbasid Mirror, I would say the map, the initial spawns of the resources doesn't matter too, too much because it is a mirror and it's one of those where it doesn't matter if uh, your food or gold is in front or in the back. If your opponent is sieged up in your front, you're probably losing already. Yeah. So they're going to be trying to fight on the middle, which there's this stealth forest really nicely positioned. So that's something they got to be careful about, mm. you know, with main gunnel shots and not getting completely uh, deleted. The gold seems pretty, pretty even on uh, equal sides. Both of the players actually have gold on this, you know, same side. Hmm. And that might be the focus point for both players. If you put pressure on that side, you deny not only one gold, but multiple. We also see a pretty nice cliff formation as well down towards this south side of the map. So it could be interesting to see how it plays out. But I, I want to draw your attention back to that stealth forest you mentioned earlier. Obviously, in your series earlier today, we saw some amazing mangonel shots. So we could potentially be seeing that happening today as well so we'll have to pay attention we'll have to wait and see but if there's a unit that can swing the tide of a fight it is definitely the mangonel and a stealth forest is a great place to do it so we'll see how players look to go now we talked a little bit before about the potential openings that we're going to see out of these guys and you're of the suspicion that it's going to be a triple tc for both yeah uh i think it's just the best uh build you can do right now like i said second tc is the best but because it's a mirror people love to offer the third one because if played well, it shouldn't be punished. Now, the one thing that I find interesting is neither player went for berries with Abbasid. So they're trying to get uh, feudal as fast as possible. Mm. Because going for sheep, you don't need to build that mill. The workers don't need to travel. So you're going to get the fastest possible feudal ever. Um, Marine Lord might run out of sheep. I'm not sure where his scout is, but he is on one sheep right now. And if that runs out, that is going to be definitely a delayed feudal. Yeah, one of the things I, I've noticed as well is by not taking the berries early, obviously you save up that, that 50 wood. It allows you to go and spend it elsewhere. And we see that he's already on uh, the wood camp at, or the, the lumber camp at this point in time. So looking to invest his resources there. But we're going to see economic wings coming up, out from both of these players. Uh, and uh, already we can see both players going for that. So no real differences yet at this stage. Uh, when it comes to sheep, he manages to bring them back. Marine Lord, going to be fine. Look at that timing right there. Absolutely tight, tight timings there. But uh, up towards the north, Lucifron, looking a little bit tired with regard to his sheep. I don't see too many under the town center there, Beastie. Yeah, he has them really way, way into the TC. I'm not sure how many he actually has. But usually, if you do go for ah. early mill, you also want to try and go for uh, wheelbarrow. But because neither player has a mill, I'm assuming they're going to have a very delayed wheelbarrow, if any. And we do see early stone from Lucifron, and we see a mill from Marine Lord, which is interesting. What is going on here? So, so our first deviation, obviously, players mirrored up until this point. But now we see a mill coming out from Marine Lord and an early wheelbarrow. So could we potentially see a single town center out from here? Or maybe he's looking to be a bit more greedy? What's the play? Um, I think he's still going to go for stone. It's just going to be a bit delayed. I personally prefer Marine Lord's build, but maybe just going mill from the start. Because that wheelbarrow, you know, every eco upgrade or any eco upgrade, the earlier you get it, the better it is. It yeah. pays off faster. And Lucifer is going to be having second TC faster, but he's going to be stuck without wheelbarrow for a while. While Marine Lord, his second TC, if he does go for it, will be delayed but it will kind of pay off a much faster in the in the long run. So he's trying to get enough gold now for uh, fresh foodstuffs with his four villagers, and we might see him go to stone after. Um, we'll see what he has in store. Yeah, we'll look to it, and you can see already the harassment on that. Now, Lucifer's going to be checking this, and he's going to realize that his enemy has gotten that wheelbarrow out. And there's a whole lot of mind games that go into this as well. But you can see just the scout being so on top of it. So he might potentially look to go for his own. But look how heavy he is on stone back here. That's a lot of villagers on stone at this point. Yeah, so Lucifron did see the mill. So he definitely knows this is a wheelbarrow. Because also you can you know just click on the gold and see how much gold is mined. So he knows this is a wheelbarrow opening. And like I said, I, I don't think one is, you know insanely better than the other but i do prefer what marine lord is doing because sometimes you get into these weird situations where getting wheelbarrow later on is very awkward 
like you want to build an army, you want to tech up to castle, and it's hard to find time when to get that wheelbarrow. So I feel like it's better to just kind of get it out of the way straight away. Yeah, well, we already start to see some further deviations now. Marine Lord actually dropping down a stable uh, before he even gets down that uh, that second town center. Whereas Lucifron dropping it down at 5.09. So not a bad little time for him. But uh, once again, you can see the heavy villagers on stone down towards the south in Marine Lord's base. And now it looks like uh, majority of the villagers actually coming off the stone at the moment uh, for Lucifron. And he definitely was turning his attention towards that gold mine. So we might have a bit of a fast castle on our hands here, Beastie. Yeah, so Lucifron is opting for um, one TC extra and then going into gold. I still think, if I'm not mistaken, that Marine Lord will go for double TC. Right. Um, Let's see, he's pulling, yeah, he's definitely going for another one. He's pulled three workers and he's leaving still workers in the zone. So he's going to go for double TC, I think. And, well, I guess we'll see the scenario that I was talking about because I do feel that the player that is going for fast castle like this mm. should not be able to punish if Marine Lord uh, answers correctly. Do you th I think there might have been a little bit of metagaming going on with, with the big brains over here. So obviously... Marine Lord's got out that stable. He's not looking to do a huge amount of damage to it. But Lucifron, I think he spotted that out and he said, well, hold on, my enemy's going early stable. I'm just going to cut it with two TCs. Hasn't gone for the third town center. Now Marine Lord's free to go to that third town center, free to go up. You can see he's, he's gathering all, all that stone up. He's going to have 300 very, very shortly. Whereas Lucifron's now very much so committed to just a two town center build. Yeah, I'm actually curious how it's going to play out. Something that Marine Lord needs to do, he needs to scout this. If he doesn't know, and if he's not aware that the opponent is only going one TC, uh, you need to play a specific way. So the moment Marine Lord drops the third TC, he needs to put like 15 or 20 workers even on gold. And he needs to basically rush up to castle with no units. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he will be in this awkward situation in feudal versus siege units. And we do see Lucifer going for double barracks, so this will most likely be mad at arm rush. Yeah, so there's definitely a timing window that can occur here. It's just that Marine Lord's got to spot it and try and do his best to shut it down. Hey, where's his... Is oh, yep. he making another TC? Yeah, Marine Lord's got... He's got enough... Oh, he doesn't have uh, wood. Yeah, so he's got enough stone in the bank. About to hit that wood now, but I expect as soon as he crosses, crosses that threshold, he's going to be moving these villagers off wood. Maybe focusing on getting up. There we go, third TC on the deer. Now, we can see that scout on the minimap heading out over towards the base. Actually, I take it back. It's a horseman. Uh, going to be looking to scout. He spots the, the gold mine. He's going to be seeing the villagers on that. It's going to be telling him what his enemy is up to. But take a look at Lucifron's gold that he's got stacked up. It's already more than enough. And now that, that horseman, <laughs> it's just doing horseman things, just getting ignored. I suspect these villagers look like they've got textiles on them. It's barely even scratching them. No, not even. I don't even have textiles on them. It's just classic horseman things. Yeah, they're just getting bullied. I actually really like uh, the positioning of Riddler TCs. Usually most players uh, place them very like carefully, you know, behind and safe mm. behind the main TC. But, you know, if your opponent is pushing you, if he's going to win, he's going to win anyway. So you might as well do these TCs on food incomes. So you're kind of securing it with a TC. And if the opponent did, uh, attacks there, you have a defense point. Meanwhile, on you know, for Lucifer's side, it's going to be much harder for him to just go get food because none of it has towers. It doesn't have TC nearby. So I kind of like that idea for Marine Lord, and we do see that his plan will be going mass horsemen and camel archers, which I think is a very good playstyle and something that I've uh, practiced a bit with Marine Lord. It's very, very strong. So we'll see if he's going to super commit to it or this is just the initial uh, opening kind of with the army and then transition to something else. So he's going to be looking to play this feudal age up against the castle age. Is that right? No, he he will go into castle still. Uh, he will just not rush it. If you rush castle, you're going to go into men at arms crossbows. Yep. But it seems that maybe he wants to prevent rally uh, rallying from the opponent and slowly going to castle because you can't really send like four men at arms at a time because they're going to get slowly picked off. Yeah. And he might also commit to counterattacking. And if you look at another thing, 
the thing that I just talked about is he's running out of food. So if you look at the north side, that's where Lucifer is getting the food. Mm. So if Marine Lord constantly counterattacks while having more economy, he will kind of drag Lucifer down and just beat him in the long run. Yeah, it's a really smart move. It's amazing to me to watch players at this level, especially in a mirror match. I think this is the first mirror match we're seeing today, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But just the, the differences that are coming out, and even between two players that are at the very peak of gaming, to watch the extent of metagaming, the extent of deep thinking that has really gone on uh, to watch these these players fighting it out. But now we can see that push beginning and it uh, looks like this outpost might be a little bit late as the horsemen are going to be coming in, meeting with a couple of the locals and you can see a couple of sheep getting in there as well. He's bringing them to the party. Looks like those villagers are going to have to fall back as multiple villagers do manage to be taken out here. Men at Arms also are going to be coming out here for Lucifron, but I suspect it's not going to be enough to at least prevent this raid from coming in. Yeah, this is just really awkward for Lucifer now because if he moves across the map, he's going all in. This food source is going to be denied or at least delayed. So he's still going to go with men at arms across the map, but Marine Lord should have enough to defend with horsemen or at least not take too much damage. And he's just going to keep raiding with these couple of units and, you know, high level players shouldn't run into spears and just lose them, right? So this is going to be a constant threat where uh, Marine Lord will be able to go from the wood to gold to food and just constantly harass. Yeah, it's such a smart move from him to do this. Because, yeah, as you mentioned, we can see now that men at arms are coming towards the base of Marine Lord. Uh, but he's heading on the way up to Castle shortly. You can see he's got 700 gold in the bank. So he's not going to be too fussed about losing control of his gold mines at the front of his base. His food sources are safe underneath the town centers as well. So he is absolutely A-OK, -okay, at least at the moment, it seems. So one interesting thing is Marine Lord has 21 villagers on wood, which is way too many because he's only producing horsemen and one camel archer at a time. I'm surprised he hasn't put like 40 workers on food. Okay, he's moving some now because he has enough gold and he, he should tech up. Like this is going really, really well for him. Mm -hmm. He is denying a lot of food, but you can't stay on this tech for, you know, forever. So he should tech up and then continue spamming the units to make sure to not you know, just lose workers to uh, man-at-arms. Right, okay. And so now we can see those man-at-arms beginning to flood through to the multiple TCs. So once again, coming underneath this main town center, we saw that third town center was also under attack here. Horsemen looking to try and clean it up now. Uh, we can see that on Marine Lord's side, he doesn't have any upgrades yet underneath the, or up towards the top of the screen on the UI. It tells us which upgrades he's got. So no upgrades coming through. So he's going to be trying his best to, to take out these man-at-arms, but it's a bit of a struggle. You can see he's fighting but uh, managing to clean these up pretty effectively, I'd say. Yeah, and if you look at, like I said, the upgrades, there's no wheelbarrow for Lucifron. And again, this is a huge boost to your economy. It's 8 to 10% boost per resource, because it boosts all, the, all three resources, or all four. And Mi Marino got it super, super early, delayed his second TC a bit, but now the wheelbarrow is kind of doing work for him, and he's just kind of getting further and further ahead. Yeah, another cheeky raid coming up towards the north here. Camel just coming in, saying good day to a couple of those villagers and now moving through the stealth forest. It looks like players are going to be brushing past each other. I don't know if there's any scouts in there, but it looks like they may have gotten in contact with one another now. A little bit more that he's, he's bitten off a bit too much, I suspect, and he does indeed run away, tail wagging between his legs. And uh, keep in mind, he is going up to the castle age behind this. So typically going up to the castle age, we see players always opting for the culture wing. Is that pretty much just stock standard, Beastie? Yeah, I mean, the military wing is pretty good because it gives that plus one armor, but it's not that big for you to disregard the cheaper upgrades because basically what you want to do is get that culture wing uh, uh, upgrade and then just start mass upgrading economy, mass upgrading armor, damage and so on and so forth and now uh, Lucifer has a pretty big timing because these horsemen don't want to engage straight on spearmen so he has a timing here where he can do some damage and Marine Lord wants to either delay by time or just pounce on the mango nail and then try to pick apart the melee units. Yeah it looks like he's trying to come in for a bit of a pincer move here. Horsemen coming in from the, the bottom side also going towards the top side now. Mango nail does indeed go down so it means that he's not going to have a whole lot of luck at sieging this base at this point in time but obviously he's playing as the Abbasid. He's going to be able to build that siege up out on the field and now we continue to see he's going to be dropping down a second Manganel. He's got all of his veteran upgrades on his spearmen and uh, managing to fall back now. He's up to the third age so what is he going to be looking to get into? Obviously now he's up to the third age. Is infantry the choice? Is he going to just be looking to go into knights here? 
Um, what I find pretty curious regarding Merlin's play, he's actually not transitioning. Oh, he's just upgrading horsemen, he's producing more camel archers, uh, and upgrade for camel archers on the way. So it seems like he wants to stick with this, but uh, Lucifer is kind of building like a death ball that horsemen cannot engage. So only the only real units that can engage are camel archers, but camel archers don't kill men at arms super fast. And we see a siege workshop getting dropped down. Siege workshop because obviously no yeah. infantry, no ability to build any springles. So I mean that's a it's a tough situation for him now. So obviously realizing he's going to have to try and deal with these mangonels. Ops for it uh, with that, but that was that villagers out towards that eastern side. But we see a little bit of a, an engagement now. Camel's doing a great job of just picking off these spears at the same time towards the infrastructure here. Mangonels unfolding, looking to take out a couple of those villagers. And uh, a huge bunch of them grouping up there. He's got to be careful, Marine Lord. But uh, it looks like we've got out towards the east side. Marine Lord actually mining gold and uh, among the berries of his opponent. And so this is well and truly under vision. So if that doesn't go unnoticed, there could be a significant threat to his life. But now, speaking of significant threats, Horsemen coming in, looking to try and take control of the situation. Unfortunately, they're caught in a choke point. Village is going to get pulled, managing to take out the first Mangonel. Second Mangonel looking to have its sights taken out as well. Looks like it's going to be going down, Beastie. Indeed yeah, it does. Mar Marine Lord's economy is a little bit of a mess right now. He will slowly clean this up. And he did pick up, pick off the two Mangonels, but this is so much damage. The workers are in TCs just running around. Uh, he has a lot of idle villagers actually on his first berries that he's not able to control. And he was 18 workers ahead before this attack, which puts him in a obviously a really, really good position because this is a mirror match. So any lead that you have is just so much bigger. But right now he's kind of struggling to defend. And this is the issue of camel archers can kite forever, but they just kill the unit so slow that Lucifer is just doing a really, really good amount of damage. Yeah, now we see that Spring Lord about to go down as well. Nothing here to really defend it. And keep in mind behind this, Lucifer's actually added in a third town center. So, you know, before you talked about there was a significant village elite that managed to get evened up, but now Lucifer's going to be able to keep up with Marine Lord. So... Uh, yeah, that's really good for him, actually. Yeah. He's feeling pretty decent in this spot, I would suspect. Having a look at the military count, you can see that Marine Lord is behind significantly. Obviously, a lot of the units that Lucifron has got, they're just those spears, but it's still a pretty tough mass to deal with. What I find really funny is Lucifron still doesn't see this on the right side because that's the only place Marine Lord is actually getting gold. And if he actually just puts five villagers into the tower, the tower... Oh, he can actually upgrade arrow slits. The tower would kill all the villagers on gold, and then Marine Lord would be completely out of gold, but... I'm not sure if he doesn't see, because you can even send one man at arm there and just take care of it. Yeah, you're 100% right. He's got gold absolutely nowhere at this point. And now the Camel Archer mass is beginning to build up. It's quite a significant mass. Only a single Mangonel going to be coming out. We can see the Springled now. Going to be looking to try and make ends meet over on that left side. Doesn't manage to get through. And the Mangonel does manage to get away to safety. But still we see that clean up over on R3 as the, uh, the Camel Archers continue firing off. But uh, now that mass is really starting to build up for Marine Lord, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and the problem now for Lucifron is while he dealt some damage, he kind of kept trading units for workers, which is fine most of the time, but now he's in a situation where uh, if he stops attacking, he will get attacked, right? So the moment Marine Lord stabilizes, he will counterattack, and cavalry is much better than infantry at, at just dealing damage everywhere, and if you look at Lucifron's side, he has... Uh, two groups of workers on the right side, he has some workers on the left side, and cavalry can kind of pick apart, and you already see Marine Lord just moving and trying to counterattack straight away. Yeah, as you mentioned, as soon as those attacks stop, that's when uh, Marine Lord's going to be looking to push. He's got the cavalry, so he's going to be moving a lot faster. Villagers having to evacuate from that gold mine as well, but keep in mind, Marine Lord has now opened up that central uh, avenue, so it means he's going to be able to get access through there. He's going to be able to secure his own gold again. But it does look like that his enemy is pushing towards him. Lucifron once again coming for these gold mines. He knows that Lucifron, or he knows that Marine Lord rather, is, is going to need some sort of gold. He's going to have to find it somewhere. And uh, he spots the exact place that it's happening. Yeah, this is what I mentioned earlier. All the Marine Lord's gold is on one side. And you can see Lucifron is focusing that side. I think if he noticed that gold mining on his side of the map, he would be in a much, much better position. Marine Lord does have gold on the left, which I'm not sure if uh, Lucifer knows about it, so Marine Lord can potentially go there. But if he does, it's so far away, you know, you lose a lot of mining time. It's, you know, a little advantage for Lucifer once again. And um, 
We'll see what he decides to do. Oh, big, meanwhile, big raid on the right side, and I don't think Lucifer even noticed he lost. Oh so, my so lord! Many workers. Yeah, managing to to come ahead now, Marine Lord with the village account and keep a, a mind up to the north side as well. We can see a, another attack going to be happening. A lot of outposts are being put down here, and even more villages are going to be going down. So ten villages do survive inside the outposts. Looks like three lost their lives outside, and now that Manganel going to be taken out, or at least attempted to be taken out by those horsemen. Not going to be able to make it unfortunately for them but uh, I mean at this point if you were to do a stock assessment of the game we're at 20 minutes in is there one player that's got a lead is there one player that's behind well Lucifer is kind of on a, on a ticking time bomb like he needs to do something uh, right now the game worker wise might seem fine but again he has cavalry and if you look if Marine Lord spots that the defenses against cavalry are kind of weak you can just keep counter-attacking and Lucifer is kind of going straight for the base which is extremely hard to attack into TC. Oh, and he has Mangonel now that just got a big, big shot. And I don't know if Lucifer is actually paying attention because there might be another one coming. Oh, it sits there. I always sit and wait for the Mangonel to unfold, but it just, it was looking in the direction, it just didn't bother. Camel Arch is now looking to do the same thing. Horseman going to be able to clean that one up. And this is looking tough for Lucifer at this point losing out another Manganel, and you can see just the kiting is going to be happening. Doesn't even need to kite. He's got that many Camel Archers at this point. He's not fussed if he loses one or two. We see a bit of kiting coming in here, but yeah, he's not fussed at all. Yeah, so this is the problem with infantry based out, right? There's no... It's very hard to retreat, and now these Camel Archers can chase down the army if they want to. We do see a small counterattack on the left, which... You know, killed a couple of villagers, delayed the mining, but again, infantry is not that good at raiding, and... If Marine Lord is paying attention, he can always kind of pick up those units and just catch them and uh, kind of get a little army lead there. And now we can see that the uh, military count is really starting to dwindle for Lucifron. You can see he's got eight military units out on the map at the moment. He's being raided back at the base. Village account starting to dwindle as well. He's down 20 villagers at this point. And this is where you start to see the difference between the very top level players. And I'm talking about just Marine Lord in that and second on the ladder, which is Lucifron. And he starts to find these openings and now builds up this lead. He's got a 22 villager lead at the moment. He's managed to secure up a 20 military unit lead as well. And just slowly and steadily, he ekes out these tiny leads and it begins to snowball. Yeah, Lucifer's actually uh, floating a lot of gold. He has 2.3k right now. Um, I think he's just not noticing because his army is very food uh, based. So. He's getting a lot of gold, but he's actually not producing or upgrading too much with it. Uh, maybe he wants to trade some of that to try get Imperial, but Marine Lord, again, the moment he defended, it's counterattack time, and cavalry is way, way harder to stop than infantry pushes. Yeah, there are so many units here as well. This is going to be incredibly difficult to, to stop. You can see him just picking off the spears, barely even putting up a fight. Now all the village is going to be going down. You can hear those Abbasid screams. The Abbasid somewhat infamous for their villager lines, just screaming as they die. And uh, it's it's not sounding pretty. Uh, it is not sounding pretty at all. And you can see that village account just coming down. He's down by about 38 villages now. Manganel going to be unfolding. Managed to get a pretty decent shot off there, but i got to be honest with you. At what cost? Yeah, this is not looking good. He just lost so, so many workers. It's 81 right now versus 122 workers. Uh, he does have two relics for him, but that doesn't make up the difference. And we do see Marine Lord just moving his siege as well. He recognizes the opponent doesn't have a lot of units, and he might potentially try to just end the game straight up. Yeah, I think it's a smart move. He can smell the blood in the water. He's going to be looking to make a strike right now. And look at this cavalry composition that he's got. I've never seen a, a cavalry comp work this effectively. He's quite literally been making exclusively horsemen and camel archers. That's it. We've seen the occasional Springle, we've seen the occasional Mangonel, but not a single barracks, not a single mana arm, not a pike or a spear rather, an archer or a crossbow, nothing at all. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a very good playstyle. Um, I think most people haven't seen it or haven't played against it. And if Lucifer hasn't faced it before, I think this is going to be very hard for him to deal with. Because, you know, Abbasid is one of the sims that recently got a little bit of buffs. Uh, and people started playing it more and more, experimenting, and this is one of the things that uh, came out of it. And I think Camel Archers are actually quite a decent unit if you use properly and, and used in a proper unit composition. And uh, you're seeing it right now? Yeah, this is... Eye-opening stuff, that's for sure. But now that village elite continuing to build up about 50 villages at this point in time. 
and uh, just continues to run around his enemy's base and probably going to be starting to think about Imperial at this point. You can see the resources starting to stack up because he's up to that 196 population at the moment. So there's nowhere else really to spend the resources. You've got all your upgrades, you've got all your units. So what else can you do? You go up to the Imperial Age and that's exactly where it looks like he's going to be going here. Yeah, and Marine Lord is uh, on the right side just ping-ponging between uh, golds that were there. He's trying to deny his opponent gold. He's just raiding farms. Like, he knows where all his resources are. And you cannot catch up to the, this army with, like, spearmen and stuff. Because even when you do, they're just going to run away, rotate around. There's going to be another run by on the other side. So it's just a very, very tough position. And Marine Lord is checking this gold. And we'll finally find where the gold is for Lystra. Yeah, you can see all those villages evacuating now. Uh, up towards the north, if we take a look. A little bit down, a little bit down. You got it. You got a vodka. That's all right. But uh, there were a lot of vi villages evacuating. And speaking of evacuating, take a look at that force. It's starting to build up now. So he's on about, they're on about this similar population or similar military population. But uh, I don't think Lucifer's ever going to be able to catch Marine Lord at this point. Yeah, even if he does, which again, Marine Lord, you know, won't just run his units into the enemy units and lose all of them. Even if he does, Marine Lord is taking up the Imperial, which is obviously going to be huge for him. He can get all those upgrades and just kind of extend his lead uh, further. And meanwhile, Lucifer, you can see he's just struggling to defend the wood line. Uh, and actually, Marine Lord is trading, trading really, really bad. Yeah, this is very, very poor trades here. The Mangonels on the back line were doing very effective damage. Marine Lord losing about 30 units there, at least 30 units. He's obviously got reinforcements here. Plenty of infrastructure back here, but a nice little raid in the base here. Marine Lord up to 144 villagers, so he doesn't really care. He's got a 53 villager lead at this point in time. So he is not fussed at all if he loses a handful. But uh, you can see he's on the way up to Imperial now. So going to be looking to go into Imperial units or Elite units. What sort of route do you think he goes? Is he just going to stick with the, the cavalry composition here, Beastie? I think he will, but if you look at the worker count, Marine Lord has 144, and the TCs are queued up. So <laughs> there's a thing where you're you're playing really fast, and you're kind of harassing, harassing. You're automatically just building units. Yep. He's supposed to stop at maybe 130 maximum, but he's still producing units. And... You know, while his economy is great, he will only have 50 supply for army. So if he doesn't actually see that and delete some of his workers, he might lose the game because his army is just too small. Even though he can reinforce extremely fast, there's not a lot of units in the field. And now we see Lucifron actually looking to take control. Take a look at the military population difference between these two players. Lucifron sitting on 68 military population at the moment. Marine Lord only sitting on 30, so more oh than God. double. 150 workers right now, and there's more queued up. <laughs> I, I think Marine Lord thinks he's playing PvE right now. He's having an absolutely great time. But uh, I keep going to be coming up down towards the base of Marine Lord. He needs to get these elite upgrades in. We see some upgrades that are coming through. It looks like he's gone for elite horsemen. Uh, and uh, no elite camels coming through just yet, it seems. But four culverin also in queue. Okay, I think Marine Lord uh, noticed finally. He stopped making villagers. And he's going <laughs> to lose some here, which is actually very good for him. Uh, so that he can free up some supply down to 134, which is, you know, it's a good number. Uh, definitely don't want to go over that. And he starts raiding once again. He knows where the gold is for his opponent, and he's just kind of going that route. Yeah, and now we start to see walls coming up for Lucifer. And I was going to ask you a little bit earlier, but um, you're a fan of walls. It seems some players aren't. Lucifer was doing the no wall challenge. He's decided to make some walls. Too late. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the units are in, right? And this keep, for example, if there was a wall, there wouldn't be need for this keep. So you can put keep next to that middle to west rich gold vein. And around this time, 30 minutes in, the way that game shifts is you go from attacking your opponent's food and wood to just focusing on the gold. Yeah. Because gold is about to run out. So, and whoever runs out of gold first is going to be in more trouble. And another problem for Lucifron is Marine Lord's army is very food and wood based. So even if he loses the gold, it's not the biggest issue for him. Meanwhile, Lucifron wants to do a lot of siege units, wants to focus on the slower play cell. So he kind of needs to continue mining that gold. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's exactly it. And if we take a look, you can see the, the gold on the extremities of the map under siege. But speaking of siege, take a look at the culverin that are out here right now. Four culverin. He is looking for absolute siege superiority and he's going to obtain it. And now Marine Lord has a huge advantage over his opponent. The uh, 
the population difference is absolutely massive. And you can see now with those elite upgrades, it's going to make it so hard uh, for him to hold on. And it looks like we might have a good game coming through any second as both players pick up the drink bottles, as is customary to do when you type GG. Yeah, you get very thirsty after the game. You want to make sure you hydrate, you know, get a sip of water and uh, kind of just move on to the next game. You know, whether you won or lost, you kind of have to just be like, all right, next game, what am I doing? What map I'm picking? And that's about it. So a bit of a scramble that game. I felt like there was attacks going all over the map. We saw, you know, raids up towards the west, raids over towards the east. A lot of fighting through the middle as well, but it just seemed a bit scrappy at some points, especially once Marine Lord took control. Do you think there was ever really a time where Marine Lord looked out of it? Um, yeah, like the first push is the most important one, I would say, in Abbasid Mirror. Depending how that goes, the game kind of can snowball in one way or the other. And I think that Lucifer maybe tried to end the game, which, you know, turned out to be a wrong choice. Mm. Uh, if he, I feel like if he went for the extra TCs, maybe built one ram, because those extra TCs cannot target fire. So if he built one ram to soak the damage and just right-clicked on the TCs, I think he would have forced Marine Lord out much quicker. Mm -hmm. But he was kind of standing in front of Marine Lord's base, building siege, and Marine Lord's like, okay, well, you're not doing anything. Yep. I'm mining gold on your side of the map, so I'll just sit here. <laughs> and when you're playing against you know, the type of army that Marine Lord was going for, you kind of want to force them to come out in smaller numbers and trade poorly. And instead, he just kind of stood there, and I think if you went for the extra TCs, which were very exposed, mm. uh, he would have been able to kill them much quicker. Not to mention, he wouldn't even need, you know, massive amount of siege, because men at arms and spearmen can just burn the, the TC super, super fast. So, uh, I feel like that was probably the biggest issue, and the fact that Marine Lord mined, like, 2k gold on the right side, yeah. while Lucifer had vision. So, that is kind of a big problem as well, and if you deny that, he wouldn't have had the gold, right? Because the gold were w in front of his base were completely denied. Yeah, it could have been absolutely terrible over on that right side. But we'll take a look now at what you may potentially see up in game number two. So obviously Lucifron losing that first game. It's going to be his choice of maps now. On your screens it does say King of the Hill or King of the Hill. Uh, but I assure you that is King of the Hill and Hill and Dale uh, that is going to be up for uh, pick. So we're working through some teething issues. You'll have to bear with us. Yeah, but, uh, Lucifer kept trying to pick King of the Hill twice. We kept telling him you can't do that. There's only Stop. one king. And he's like, I want King of the Hill twice. <laughs> and we just we just said we'll put it on the uh, we'll put it on the screen so he's happy, but he cannot play yeah. uh, King of the Hill twice. That is that is true. Yes, uh, unless unless it, maybe tomorrow he can play it a second time. Maybe tomorrow, yeah, well, unless someone unless bans someone it, <laughs> then that's going to be another issue. I mean, but com coming into this. You got some great tech, if, 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 if great information. I know Lee Knox sitting around the corner. He's ready. He's probably oh, watching. Oh, you, oh, sorry. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Viper's backstage. He's watching and he's like, King of the Hill. I'm going to ban that map. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, Lucifron, uh, he's got King of the Hill. He's got uh, High... Well, I was going to say High, Hillendale. but Hillendale. Yeah. So two very defensive maps. Two maps that uh, I guess you can see Delhi, HRE, French, Wait, Mongols. Who, who banned Mongols? Uh, we can take a quick look and see. Because one of them banned Mongols, one of them banned Delhi. Yes. So, uh, Marine Lord has banned Mongols and Lucifron has banned Lucifer Delhi. Lucifron banned Delhi. Interesting. Yeah. So, potentially, Lucifron can pick Hill and Dale, go Delhi himself, and Marine Lord will probably pick HRE. All right. Well, let's have a look and see what we've got. Because, ladies oh, and gentlemen, wow. we are <laughs> entering into game number two. And as Beastie Cutie has correctly predicted, identified... A little bit mysterious over I there, Beastie. I swear I did not know that this was happening. <laughs> we have got Lucifron, who is going to be playing the Delhi, who is uh, going to be playing... Uh, I mean, it, it's a it's a great civilization, a really strong civ on this map. And obviously Marine Lord, who's going to be playing the Holy Roman Empire here. Uh, already got that prelate out walking across, so... I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit before, but let's uh, let's get into it now that we're in the in the game. How do you feel about this matchup coming into this? Do you think there's any way that the Holy Roman Empire can really win this if there's um, no mistakes? I mean, I think it's just hard. Like, in my opinion, Delhi is the best sit right now. Uh, and obviously, we've talked a lot with the players here, and it's kind of split 4-4. Four, four. four players think that Mongol is the best sit. Four players think Delhi is the best sit. Mm. Um, 
obviously, you know, these two guys also ban different civs, and this map is probably the best HRE map currently. Yeah. The problem is, it doesn't do too well into Delhi, because HRE wants to get to Castle and get the relics, right? The problem is, uh, Delhi gets Sacred Sides in Feudal Age. So, Delhi actually forces HRE out, which is the only civ that does that. Yep. Most other civs are trying to be aggressive against HRE, but Delhi's kind of like, no, no, you, you come on the middle of the map, and we'll fight there. Yeah. And I feel like uh, for Delhi, it's always a positive trade because if they trade evenly and if they get any sacred side, they're slowly moving towards castle. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, HRE on the other side, if they trade evenly, they're not gaining anything. Like they need to get to castle. So yeah. you kind of need that break to, to get extra gold and resources. So I do think that uh, Delhi is favored here, but with Lucifron. You know, banning Delhi, maybe he didn't want to play mirror match on this map, and he just kind of felt that this is his pick. And I do feel that it's a good strategy for him because mm -hmm. uh, I do think that Delhi should do well against Edgeri. Yeah, I, I got to agree with you. And we'll take a look at the relics. And as you guys can see, this has been one of the maps that has been very carefully selected by our observer, uh, and some very even relics. It's got uh, one one to each side of the base for each player, and then one very carefully positioned right in the middle. A little bit closer towards uh, towards Marine Lord here, but uh, I think he's going to be pretty happy with, with the way that it's spawned. But speaking of happy, take a look at this Arkham Chapel. What do you reckon of that? Uh, that is a juicy one. I mean, it takes all the boxes. It gets the food, he gets the wood, and he gets the gold. And he gets the rich vein gold, which is really, really good for him. Yeah. Um, he needs to be careful. He's kind of... The, the, the prelate is kind of pushing the deer away, so they're extremely... Uh, spread right now mm. uh, so he kind of needs to try and maybe gather him up a little bit one thing that I love doing when playing against HRE is actually pushing the deer and then killing them in really bad spots <laughs> yeah. so that the opponent actually has a very bad time at gathering them and just it's just inefficient completely so um, but yeah I like the I like the chapel it's a good one I actually have a lot of remarks regarding chapels I'm very critical when you know, see, see people make chapels in like weird spots. So like, oh, that's not that's not where you want to go with that. But this one is a uh, is a really good one. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a good one. Uh, I, I start. I, I look at his base, and I think you might have you could have come down a little bit closer to the berries and the other gold mine yeah. because it, it's nice having the large gold vein. But keep in mind, you're playing the HRE. You don't really need to have the big gold vein, but it's always nice to have. But now we see a little bit of interesting uh, developments here. Barracks coming out very early for Marine Lord. Yeah, very, very early. Uh, the meta currently with Delhi is you get fast stables the moment you hit feudal, and then you do have prelates inside the stable so you can get horsemen out really, really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, uh, yeah, so the, the thing is, Marine Lord is going for a super fast barracks, expecting that, but Lucifer scouted it and is like, well, I'm not going to go for stables. I'm just going to go spearmen myself. And I would actually like if you. Oh, he is going. Oh. He canceled barracks and he's going for stables anyway. Interesting. Yeah, I, I always love when I when the building cancels come out. It's really good to see. I'm a bit surprised that uh, Lucifer just didn't go for archery range because the chapel, while it is really good, it is extremely exposed. Like even the food and wood and gold is exposed. So if like five archers showed up, he would kind of have a hard time defending it. Mm. And Marine Lord can go for you know stables uh, himself, but by the time he gets the numbers, he would probably take some damage. Uh, from the archers. Now, there was a game that you played earlier today up against Vortex, if I remember correctly. It was the same matchup uh, where... No, it was against uh, French. Oh, it was against French, apologies. Yeah. Uh, where we actually saw the Holy Roman Empire player, uh, Vortex, making a whole bunch of men at arms. Now, they're incredibly strong, very capable of pushing people off the sacred sites. That was me making the... Uh... <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> Beastie's tapping me. He's like, that was me. I'm, I, like, I'm oh, looking at Beastie like... <laughs> I'm looking at Beastie like, what do you want about, Beastie? Like, oh, gosh. I, I apologize. It's been, a, it's been a long day. Too there's many been, games. There's yeah. been a lot of games, yeah. But uh, obviously, you're a big fan of the Men-at-Arms then. Uh, yeah, so if you manage to get Castle, Men-at-Arms can kind of beat armored units with the Heavy Maces upgrade. It can beat archers. The problem is they're very food intensive, they're 100 food each, and if you're trying to rush castle, you're already kind of starved for food. So we'll see what, I mean, Marine Lord is walling off, and this does look like 
Let me see. Only five on wood. This does look like a fast castle. Can probably afford to do a couple of more on food. But he actually has a good amount of deer. He actually pushed him closer to the mill. Actually, he has a really, really good amount of sheep. He has yeah. eight sheep, I think. Yeah, Huge eight sheep, which sheep. is really, really nice for him. Yeah, but uh, we can start we seeing that he's starting to wall himself in here. So playing a bit defensive, obviously very fearful of that attack coming in. Now we do see the archer coming out as well. Only one archer at this point in time. Probably going to be able to do a little bit of damage here, but not before that wall gets up. And now we start to see the prelates, or rather the scholars, moving across the map. 41 seconds until Sanctity is with us, but uh, a little bit preemptive with the movement of the scholars. So all, one of the things I like to harp on with you, a good Delhi player, is that they should have a scholar standing on every single sacred site the yeah, moment the that moment. Sanctity comes through. So you just hear yeah. triple ticks, just dong, dong, dong. And sometimes we don't see that, and it pains me. But it looks like today, Lucifron going to be identifying that. And look out! Look at the harassment that's coming in here. A little bit of uh, a cheeky wall coming out here from Marine Lord, but not today. Yeah. So uh, this is. It looks a little bit like my game versus Vortex, except Lucifron is kind of aggressive. But now it's turning into actually, I don't want to attack you. I want to just wall you off so you can't get the relics. And this is a very good strategy against HRE. You don't need to kill them, you can just wall them off and then they're going to struggle to get out. Yep. Meanwhile, you bought enough time, he's going to get sacred sites. Well, so that's if the wolves start stop him. Take uh, a look yeah, at Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of bitey boys. Uh, so even if Marino slowly gets out and there's three sacred sites and you got to escort your pellets to pick up the relics and it just kind of becomes too much. And meanwhile, Lucifer is just getting so much gold from the sacred sites yeah. while investing not that much wood in order to wall off his opponent. So I like the, I like what Lucifer is doing right now. And I'm kind of worried for Marine Lord in, in kind of breaking out and actually managing to grab some relics. Yeah, I'm curious to see how he's going to be able to do it. But down towards that south side, oh, we did no. see the sacred site. Unfortunately, uh, the scholar lost its life down on that, that bottom sacred site. But now in the middle of the map, we've got the archers that have finished the wall. So it looks like Marine Lord has been completely walled in at this point in time. He is now just going to be going into the castle edge. You can see he's got the villagers there. He's not going to be able to get any relics into his base at this point in time. And he's got a relatively good spawn. A relic up towards the north here, which is safe. Uh, a relic down towards the south, which is relatively safe. One right outside the front of his base, but they're all covered by walls. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I really like Lustrum's play. You can see his resources slowly going up. You know, he will age up eventually. And what he can do is actually just mass archers now and then later crossbows and just shoot over the walls. Like, mm. you don't need to fight Marine Lord. Just delay him because he's already getting his gold. And this is why I said earlier, when you play Delhi vs HRE, you force HRE on the map, but Marine Lord's still deciding to rush Castle and not take that. But mm -hmm. you can see why you have to go out on the map, because if this happens, this is just a really, really awkward and bad situation for him. And now we get to see that beautiful Sacred Sight timer towards the bottom left-hand side of your screens, just above our best of five day one group stage words, where we're very kindly sponsored by Logitech. Big shout out to Logitech. But you can see that there is nine minutes and 45 seconds until a Sacred Sight victory is completed. But keep in mind that there might be little humps and bumps along the way, potentially a bit of a neutralization that comes in. So we'll have to keep an eye out. But you mentioned earlier that Lucifron, he takes the Sacred Sights he buys himself time with the walls. One of the things you didn't talk about is the fact that he's got scholars already out on the map. So he's going to be able to pinch those oh, relics away that, from his enemy. That's actually a very good point. And you see the scholars are moving. I didn't even consider that for some reason. It's because most civs, you know, can get uh, relics that early. But if he actually just gets the, the relics, mm. even if Marine Lord breaks out, it's like, well, what then? You know, you, exactly. your whole point of breaking out is kind of gone. And... I'm not sure how many scholars he has on the map. Oh, he picked up one in the top left. He's going to pick up one on the right. So, yeah, I really like this play, actually. It's a really, really smart idea. And, yeah, Marine Lord probably is seeing on the minimap the relics slowly disappearing. Yep. And I would love if he managed to get the, the middle one, like just in the middle of the map, if he managed to get that relic home. Oh, there's a scholar coming for it. Oh, jeez. Oh, Even if he could seal up one or two relics, he'd be very oh, happy. that's but the last look relic. That. Yeah, that, that is really the last relic right there. If that relic goes, I can't see any way that Marine Lord wins this game. Oh, no, 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 don't run, Scholar. Just do it. Oh, just no. Just commit. Just commit. He's going to do it. 
<laughs> you might be sacrificed, but it is what it is. It's for the cause, little scholar. Run, run, run. Now he's going to be running away. Yet to have that speed upgrade. I love the, the speed upgrade. What, what age is that available? Is that an age three upgrade beast here? Uh, for the scholars? I have no idea, Adam. <laughs> you uh, play yeah, enough yeah, Delhi. <laughs> Swiftness. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing quite funny than I'm a than streamer. Watching. I don't I don't play this too much. It's just, you know, oh, stream look, here and there. Look at the Wallalols ready to go off, ladies and gentlemen. We might have some ourselves a bit of a religious conversion happening here. A lot of knights beginning to break up, heading towards the mosque with their relics. Let's see if these Wallalols do manage to come off. First one coming down. Repels the first of the attacks. I don't think Marine Lord's going to be able to push in any closer. You can see the men at arms starting to come out now. Also got the prelate on the front line just in case any relics do get dropped down. But now you can see Lucifron very happily sits with five relics in his possession, denying Marine Lord any Wallalol potential, any Regnitz Cathedral potential. And look at that, defending with his own relics. I really like uh, Lucifron's play, actually. I think he's very smart, very well executed, actually. Like, he managed to pick up all the relics. Uh, he really needs crossbows, though. Like, he has men-at-arms, but men-at-arms do not deal with knights too, too well. And he has so much gold, right? He, he has insane economy regarding gold. What he needs to do now is just make sure that he's getting a lot of food and make sure he's mass producing units and he'll be in a great, great position because you can see Marine Lord kind of desperately trying to make something happen because yeah. he realizes this is very, very bad. Yeah. I, I It feels like at the moment Lucifer's kind of sitting on the edge of his seat. Uh, and we can see behind this, Marine Lord is reacting to the Sacred Site. So two of the Sacred Sites have been neutralized. The third one up towards the north is currently being neutralized. So he's looking to stabilize. Obviously, he's down five relics, and that's never a position you want to be, especially as the Holy Roman Empire. But he's trying to make it work. Yeah, he, he's just playing a Roman Empire. No, no relics for him. And... I mean, it's funny because he teched up to Cathedral and he doesn't have a single relic. So this is just, it's all about Lucifer just holding. Like just, even if you lose some worker, it doesn't matter because yep. not only you took five relics, but you actually took insane amounts of gold income that A3 is quote unquote supposed to have. Yep. So he's just so, so far ahead and he just needs to try and stabilize, but Marine Lord is finding ways to do damage on both sides. A lot of knights in the base. Marine Lord looking incredibly strong. It's almost like the game got called a little bit too early. I mean, Lucifron, obviously, he's got plenty of gold in the bank, sitting there with more than 1,100 gold right now, 500 gold a minute, obviously those five relics. But look at these knights. There's just no response to them at the moment. And keep in mind, he's playing the Delhi Sultanate. It's going to take time for those upgrades to come through. And he's sitting here idle. Lucifer on 25 villages, Marine Lord on 45, a 20 villager difference. So despite being behind on the relic count, but despite losing those sacred sites in the early game and managing to finally neutralize them, and now go out and actually capture them himself, but he's managed to build up a villager lead just simply by killing the villagers of his opponent. Is he possibly going to win this game? Uh, he needs to just he needs to just take a you know, just chill, just stabilize a little bit. I would love if this wall came earlier, right? Uh, <laughs> that he's building now because that would solve all his problems. Because he had four barracks producing spearmen, they were just kind of trickling in slowly, yeah. and they were just kind of not not gathered at all. And you see a lot of kind of I think it maybe panic from Lucifron. The villagers are kind of running back and forth. Some yep. AFK. There's a knight killing villagers in his base, and I don't I'm not sure if he realizes it. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, he just needs to try to stabilize and kind of go from there. And Marine Lord is very, very committed to this. He is mining a lot of gold, but he is slowly going to start running out of uh, resources under that chapel in deer and sheep. So he's kind of going to have to move around a little bit and maybe lose that chapel buff. Yeah, it's going to be tough for him. But I mean, obviously his enemy's got five relics, but he's looking to capture sacred sites. He's picked up two of those sacred sites now. So at least he's got, you know, a, a bit of a, a second prize, you could say. 200 gold a minute coming in, so two-thirds of a relic. Not terrible, but uh, he's continuing to apply pressure towards the front. Some Lance Connect's now going to be coming out as well. And uh, quite a nice little composition that's coming in here from Marine Lord. I'm very surprised that Lucifron is not going for crossbows, because crossbows against HRE are just... They kind of do well against everything, right? Knights, men-at-arms, mm. and... They would be really nice uh, to just have and be able to kite your opponent. But uh, Lucifer actually 
Did he buy? Yeah, I think he bought gold. Yeah, uh, bought stone. He bought stone and dropped a second town yeah, center. Yeah, dropped a second town center. So yeah. maybe he feels like, okay, I took all the relics, so I'm just gonna go second TC recover and yep. just kind of go for longer game. Yep. But what I'm worried about is that he doesn't realize that the printer might be coming very very soon because Marine Lord is very high on both gold and food right now. And that could potentially mean that with that printer. We're going to see villager bonanzas happening. Oh, it's happening. It the is. villagers are moving somewhere. Yep, there, there it, it is. is. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have got ourselves a game. Five relics in the mosque over on the Delhi side. Zero out for the Holy Roman Empire. But who needs relics to win in this game? That is the question. Because at the moment, it looks like Marine Lord's going to be able to do it without it. And now looking to once again siege through that front gate. I think he's just going to fall back. He knows he's on the way up to Imperial. He'll look for those elite upgrades. He's going to have plenty of gold in the bank. He's got those sacred sites slowly ticking for him. And now looking to actually pick up the third sacred site here, Beastie. Yeah, it's funny how this game worked out. The <laughs> Delhi player getting all the relics and Aatory taking all the sacred sites. But, you know, it is what it is. I guess Niter Siv is getting their, their bonuses. And, uh, yeah, the printer will be coming out. And even though he got no relics, he managed to do some damage, which kind of gave him enough time to actually get Palace of Sabia, and now he will be able to print those workers so, so, so fast. And even though he doesn't have any relics, he's going to kind of come back economically and probably get ahead. Yeah, this is actually pretty massive right here. I feel like at this point, Marine Lord shouldn't even really be looking for a fight, but he is going to be turning around and now bringing his attention out. We hear a Manganel firing off towards the melee units. The Knight's going to be running it down, trying to take it out. They begin, begin to torch it down, and you can see how quickly it goes down. Obviously, these units are very, very uh, adept at taking out Siege, but have a look at the base right now, Marine Lord. He is just... How do you, how do you make that little sound, the sound that the Swabia makes? It's, I think it's... Brrr, something like yeah, that. It, it's currently print, printing, working overtime. It never stops. It never, it never does. never sleeps. It never does. He's and, up uh, a lot of villagers here. We do see the unit that I cannot pronounce, uh, Atri, a unique unit because Marine Lord recognizes that Lucifer is only making melee infantry. So and he's just switching up. Oh. We've got good game. Ladies and gentlemen, they picked up their water bottles. They've said GG, Marine Lord victorious. What a game. Beastie, wow. I'm in absolute awe. That was so well played by Lucifer, I felt like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like he put the pressure, he forced Marine, Marine Lord to wall off, then he walled him off, took the five relics. And I thought he's in a position that it's just really good. Yeah. Like, I don't think you can have a better scenario, right? He made one mistake and it cost him the game. If he actually just put a wall on the front, yeah. he would have been fine. One or wall. I feel like if he just went crossbows, I'm not sure why not a single crossbow was made that game. Mm. Uh, crossbows are great against knights. They completely melt them. Yeah. Uh, he fought against men at arms and then knights. He could have walled off while he was getting attacked as well. Like yeah. Sometimes you can just plant the wall and no more reinforcements. You're going to shut him off. But I think there was a lot of like AFK villagers. I think he was maybe panicking lights in his base, and yeah. it's very easy to. Obviously, it's a tournament setting as well. You know, That's the this big is thing. not the thing that Lucifer makes a mistake on ladder. Yeah. You know, he's at home playing. This yeah. doesn't happen. Yep. But thank you. Uh, but this is something where in a tournament, it's very easy to make these mistakes and very easy to kind of lose your composure. Maybe you're like, oh my God, this is really good for me. You yeah. know, you get a little bit excited, like, oh, this is really good for me. I can't lose from here on out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Twitch chat having some fun over there. Yeah. Oh gosh. So, How long has it been like that, Twitch chat? Because I'll be honest, I can now hear you in my ears really loudly before I couldn't hear you at all. So I'm kind of worried. Like, have you guys, have you guys been hearing him? Has it just been me talking to Beastie and Beastie Hopefully been talking not. to me? Now it's too loud. Now it's too loud. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll whisper. Um, but yeah, maybe, you know, maybe when, when something like that, that is a perfect dream scenario. Yeah. Like, I played a lot of games of Adrian Paris 4. I never took five relics from HRE. Yeah. So he might be like, oh my God, like, this is really good. I got five relics. I got the sacred sites. Yep. I'm going castle. And then knights come in and you're like, oh God, you know, you're trying to defend on the left, defend on the right, and they're just killing villagers. Uh, when he was moving villagers, a couple of times he clicked and they were AFK yep. for over long periods of time. And again, that's just kind of stuff that does happen. And I'm sure that this would never happen if he played from home, you know, comfortably. But again, that's where, you know, in tournaments, there's a lot of pressure and, 
sometimes when you get a little bit too excited that you're going to win, yep. uh, you kind of start making mistakes. That That's it. It all falls apart, doesn't it? And I, I yeah. think that really comes down to Marine Lord's experience. Obviously, he's been around in the scene for a long time. Same with Lucifron. Marine Lord on the main stage plenty of times, though. So he would not be, uh, he would not be uh, a stranger to this sort of uh, environment. Yeah. But uh, in an incredible game, I don't think we really expected to see a victory from that position. But... Uh, that's just how the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Just Marine yeah, Lord this, really... I don't know how he does it, but... Th uh, this is one of those where uh, mentally playing right now, mm. if Lucifer wins this, he, he is he, like you should just be awarded a win for the tournament because <laughs> he like he knows, guys, how far ahead he was. Th yeah. This is not a game like, mm, oh, if I just did this better, th this is like, it's a really bad game to lose. Like, he knows how far ahead he was. And when you play a game, and when you're in that good of a position and you lose, oh man, it's it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, it feels really bad, and it's hard to recover from it. Yeah, very yeah. very very few players, not just in Age of Empires, but in any game, will be able to be like, okay, I messed that one up, but let's just go next game. Mm. He should have won that. Yeah, and that you know, then it would be one one. Then it's a best of three. Exactly. And he's kind of oh, that was like really good game, you know, kind of dominated. Yep. But losing like that is just it feels really bad. And now Marine Lord knows he shouldn't have won that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, geez. All right. Well, speaking of game number three, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a couple of different options for you. So, uh, obviously, Lucifron's also going to be picking his next home map, uh, which should be King of the Hill. Yeah. Uh, he if he finally gets his pick. <laughs> if, he, if he finally gets it. Uh, some people did say he wasn't going to get it, but he may get it. Uh, when it comes to the civilizations, we'll take a look and see if we've got it. Uh... All right. King of the Hill, I would suspect. Yep. Let me see. What civs do they have left, actually? We have got, there you go. So we've got Mongols for Marine Lord, if he wants to. Uh, French? Mongols versus French, maybe? French versus French, French ladies versus French. and gentlemen. Welcome to another mirror match in the same set. Game number three between Lucifron and Marine Lord. Spawning over on the uh, the east side of the map in the color blue, we've got Marine Lord who is playing the French and his opponent on the left side of your map. It's going to be Lucifron in the color red. Now, you might be thrown off. You might be a little bit confused because we've got players that are like, they're... they're you, you see Marine Lord on the left, you see his name over on the left, but technically he's actually on the right side of the map. He's going to be fighting across towards the left. So don't worry, throws me off as just, well. Just turn uh, your monitor upside down and it's going to be... Uh, It'll be perfect. It's not going to be fixed, but it's going to be funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, mirror matchup. Um, Marine Lord uh, and I discussed quite a bit before the tournament, uh, played some games, and him and I have opinion about which save is good on which map. Uh, probably almost exact opinion, I would say. Yep. And, you know, I picked French on this map. He picks French on this map. Yep. And this is a very common map in French versus French. So this is not a matchup where they're like, oh, I've, you know, I have no idea what to do or this guy has more experience. This is a matchup on this map that is very, very common. Mm. Uh, so both of them should be very comfortable. And we actually, uh, I was discussing with Marine Lord if, because there's a, a bit of a meta change in this matchup where mm -hmm. you used to go just mass knights, that yep. was the thing, but now people started doing uh, knight spearmen. So you'd basically harass with knights but defend with spearmen. And I'm still not sure which one is better because there's benefits kind of for both, uh, but it's a lot harder to defend with spears because your units are very slow. So the opponent, if they outmaneuver, you start bleeding uh, workers. It kind of becomes a very weird and, and just bad game for you yeah uh, but i would still expect a lot of knights and players might stick around in feudal a bit longer and mm. just trying to kind of outmaneuver each other like they they're gonna straight up rally knights across the map and just try to play around try to deny gold food whatever they can from the opponent right okay well i'm looking forward to seeing how it unfolds this map in particular it's a lot of fun with the single sacred site so we could see players look to go for that that fast imperial timing, potentially put down that red palace in the center. But as you mentioned, it does seem to be a pretty heavily dominated matchup by cavalry. Uh, so we'll have to wait. We'll have to see. I want to get your opinion on the age or the age three landmark, the Royal Institute. How do you feel about this? I feel like it's very all in. Yeah. Um, like if I see it in my games, I actually just stop attacking and I play defensive. Mm -hmm. And if it's a mirror and I went Guildhall, I'm yep. just getting ahead. 
like, you just have maybe, to survive. Maybe I'll even stop making knights, mm. right? Why would I make knights versus knights with more HP? Yep. So I just kind of uh, get away from that. Maybe even do like stone walls uh, in, in castle and just kind of deny that landmark basically. Like, cool, you have more, you know, HP on knights, but if you can't harass and you can't fight into spearmen, then what's the point? So I do think that it can catch opponents off guard, but I do think it's very all in because obviously Guildhall has, you know, infinite potential, right? Yeah. Um, Quite. It, I mean, in my game earlier, I, it had four thousand gold in, you know, and that, I, I that did is, see when you took that out. I got yeah, really excited. And th <laughs> that is a lot of gold. And the question is that people have to ask themselves: Is that thirty-five percent HP buff worth four thousand gold? And I don't think it is. It's a, it's a very accurate assessment, but I'd be curious to see how it's going to go today. Obviously, Lucifron, he's on, on the edge right now. We are at match point. If Lucifron loses this game, then he's going to be down a point on the first day. Marine Lord going to be victorious in the set, but we don't see too much action at this stage in the game. Just a little bit of scout harassment. You guys know how it is in these French mirror matches. Scouts out early. We see the School of Cavalry now being completed for Marine Lord. Wheelbarrow is on the way for him as well, so looking to invest a little bit more in his economy. Yeah, I like I like Marine Lord's build again. Like this is something that um, again we discussed quite a bit. And if you are getting Wheelbarrow, get it instantly. If you don't get it instantly, don't get it and just all in. Yeah. So he's getting it super super early. It's a really nice build where you get the knight, you get Wheelbarrow, and you get professional scouts shortly after. So you kind of get everything that you need. Um, meanwhile, we saw that Lucifer is going for a mill, but I think he will be researching professional scouts. Right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so he's skipping the wheelbarrow, and this is the same thing I talked about earlier. Marine Lord right now is paying a little bit of resources, but it's going to exponentially just benefit them in the long run. Yeah. And not only that, in this matchup, it is extremely important to have wheelbarrow so your workers can run away. Mm. And that will play a big, big role in difference in when both sides have villagers running, will barrel ones run much, much faster. Yeah, now Barrack's going to be coming out from Marine Lord. Obviously, he scouts out that the knight is coming across the map, so he's going to be looking to defend here with his spears. Uh, now, I know a lot of people roll their eyes when it comes to mirror matches, but for me personally, this is my favorite. I absolutely love this, especially on this map as well, as the first villager does go down. And part of the reason why I love this mirror match is just simply because of how many villagers are going to be going down this game. So that's the first one. I want you guys to count along with me because I suspect it's probably going to be getting up into double, maybe even triple digits, Beastie, if we... Yeah, this is the most active mirror, I would say. There's just... I've never seen French vs. French where both players are camping. Like, it's always like this. There's always knights running around. There's always knights harassing. So, you it's probably the, the, the matchup where you actually need a lot of APM and multitasking. Yeah. Because if you don't pay attention, you lose a worker or two, and in a mirror, you know, that's just kind of the, the lead for the opponent just keeps growing. Yeah, as we see that second villager going down, Lucifront already doing a great job of just picking those villagers off. So he's going to be very happy with the little lead he's made so far already up those two villas. But keep in mind, obviously, Lucifront has the, or rather, Marine Lord has got that wheelbarrow in as well. But now those spears are going to be looking to defend. And I'd be curious to see what type of production we've got Lucifron going for. So you can actually see he's going for a barracks as well. So earlier, Beastie, you sort of posed the question, what's better, spears and knights versus just full knights? And uh, you weren't too sure, but it seems both players here have opted for the same, uh, the same military composition. Yeah, and neither player is actually getting. Oh, that's oh, that's super interesting. No gold for either player. Well, Marino was denied gold, so I guess that's different. But Lucifer is actually going for stone, and I'm assuming this is for second TC, which I find very, very interesting, and not something that I personally have experience with. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. Is he going to look to potentially add in a second barracks as well? Uh, that's the way I'm thinking. Like, if you wanted to add in a second barracks, you could definitely do it. Go for the second TC. Just look to play defensive. But then what, what's your composition H3? What are you thinking about then? Yeah, I'm not... I actually never played against this because I do think that second TC is extremely hard to pull off. Mm. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a mirror or not. I think Abbasu can do it really well, but other Civ is very, very difficult. Yeah. Now, the question is... Where are Marine Lord? Okay, Marine Lord has no scouting. If he actually gets over there and sees the second st uh, the stone mining, mm. obviously he's going to know what it's for. And he needs to go castle instantly and try to get the relics because that's one of the advantages that you can push for yourself. If the opponent goes second DC, mm -hmm. their castle is going to be delayed. You go your own castles, you get the relics, and yep. you kind of equalize his lead in workers by just having relics for free. Right. Um, 
So yeah, one of the things to note now, a lot of you guys might be uh, tuning in here recently. We probably haven't gone over the fact that there are in-house rules that we're playing with. If you've ever sat down and played Uno or poker, I'm sure you've got your own rules that you're going to be playing with, and it's the exact same here. So what are our in-house rules? Number one is no stone walls in the, the feudal age. So right now we're in the feudal age. If you see that stone being mined, you know it is not going to be for stone walls. It's got to be for a town center or arrow slits. Uh, but there's no outpost out just yet, so it's probably going to be a town center, and indeed that gets scouted out. So Marine Lord, well and truly aware of this second town center play, Beastie. Yeah, and we will not reveal why stone walls are banned, because it might ruin your ladder experience. So maybe it's best not to, <laughs> to share the strategy that uh, the reason why stone walls are banned in feudal age. Uh, but yeah, Stonewall, uh, you know, feudal a bit too strong, I would say. And I'm actually very curious to see how this one plays out and what is uh, Lucifer's plan. On Marine Lord's side, we do see that he is stacking gold. He's a lot of workers in gold. And he is going up to that castle slowly but surely, which, you know, like I said, it, it, it's the only thing you can do. It's not like he can start mining stone now yep. and be like, oh, I'll make my own TC. So I'm very curious how Lucifer uh, uh, kind of goes from here. Because like I said, I've never played against this, so I'm very interested to see how it plays out. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing it as well. Uh, obviously, I think both you and I, now we're actually seeing double range coming out here from Lucifer. So oh, that is unfortunate. Yeah, this is a bit curious because if, if a timing push comes in here... Oh. Never mind. Cancels <laughs> both. <laughs> so I if a timing push comes in here, okay, so he's fortunately cancelled both of those archery ranges. Uh, but yeah, if a timing push came in, that would just be absolutely uh, terrible. But it does look like Marine Lord going to be clicking up any second now. You can see he's stacking up plenty of resources in the bank, about to click up to the next stage. We'll have a look and see what he opts for. Probably going to be the Guild Hall, I'd say 99.9%. It is the Guild Hall. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So what happened there, he started two archery ranges. Uh, Lucifer did, mm -hmm. and then he saw second barracks being built. And obviously, Marine Lord will not go for mass spearmen because that's just uh, not going to work. So he probably assumed instantly that that is men at arms. Mm -hmm. So he canceled both archer ranges, and then he put a bunch of workers on gold. So he's actually trying to rush uh, Castle now as well. And it's actually very, very close. Um, he's need 200 food more, and he's going to be able to age up as well. And Marine Lord will probably be making men at arms and try to maybe rally them across the map. And one interesting thing is neither player has blacksmith uh, yet. Yet, yeah. Yeah, very interesting to note how quick it's coming up. And look at the barracks now coming in. It kind of looks like Marine Lord might be going all in at this point with this many barracks. He is definitely thinking about making some units, that is for sure. But it looks like at this point Lucifron has somewhat pulled off the second town center, obviously. The, uh, Actually, I actually think this is this is looking quite good for Lucifer. So Lucifer is going for Castle, which I mean for second TC this is not that far behind. Yeah. So what's gonna happen is Marine Lord is going to extremely commit to these men at arms. But by the time they walk across the map, you can see that uh, Lucifer is going for uh, a mass archer ranges and he's gonna go crossbows. Yep. So if Lucifer actually just plays defensive and picks up men at arms, he's gonna be in a great position with the second TC. Yeah. This is, uh, this is a pretty smart play from him to do this and a, a great potential way to extend out the series, look to try and take back a game off Marine Lord and really try and keep his head above water here. But uh, he's done a great job in picking up the deer that are out on the map. He's still got plenty underneath the town center. I'd be curious to see whether that uh, that second patch of deer did go from, uh, from Marine Lord. I think he was fighting for it. But there you go. You can see him picking those up now. And there's crossbows coming out as well. So he just needs to make sure he has enough gold and, and uh, food. And just kind of play defensive. Like just go crossbows, play around your TCs, and just delay the push as much as you can. Because Marine Lord is on a clock, yep. right? He doesn't necessarily need to kill him right now, but uh, there's a villager popping out every you know 17 seconds for Lucifer. That's extra villager, so... Uh, Marine Lord has to do something with this. Either deny a TC, deny a resource, kill some workers. Otherwise, Lucifer is just going to get further and further ahead. Yeah, and we can see now Lucifer also looking to get wheelbarrows, researching it, researching his horticulture upgrade as well. So getting all of his upgrades for his economy, he's looking quite strong as that wheelbarrow does come through just in time to be able to run those villages away. And now we see that crossbow mass beginning to build as well as the men at arms starting to come in towards that town center. Villages on the front line need to be careful here. A couple of scouts going to be running around as well. Looks like one of those crossbow getting picked off. He's got to be careful as now 
He moves back towards the town center, doing a little bit of a chase through. In between the two town centers, never a place you really want to be with your units unless you've got a critical mass. And we start to see those crossbows coming out now. Arbolatrie doing their best. Yet to have their Gambesons upgrade coming through. Haven't dropped down their Pavise shields just yet, but trying to build up that critical mass. And now the spear is going to be looking to reinforce it. Beastie, how's he doing at this point? I mean, he lost a couple of workers. Let me see how many. 54 versus 48. So he's still six workers ahead. He actually pulled a couple of workers to fight with the army, and it was the right choice. He, you know, cleans this up. There's some men-at-arms at the south, but, you know, there's more crossbows than men-at-arms. So he will delay some mining, but this, you know, this ain't it, chief. Uh, it's not <laughs> enough. So Marine Lord uh, does have a monastery. So like I said, that's one of the advantages. The question is... Can he even get the relics? Because Lucifer has equal amount of units, right? So he can just go out on the map and actually fight his opponent, which is extremely rare for second TC build. Mm. We can see some walls now going up towards the north as well. So Lucifer trying to get comfortable behind his second TC as he chases away. So just going to be some normal wooden walls. No stone coming out, at least not at the moment. And uh, yeah, managing to chase away this attacking force and at the same time going to be dropping down his own monastery as well. So realizing the importance of those relics needs to get that passive gold trickle coming in. Yeah, so I really, I really like uh, Lucifer's position right now. I think it's really, really good. I'm curious what Marine Lord will do. I mean, if I'm Marine Lord situation, I just grab stone and slap a keep on the middle. But uh, he might opt for something else. He might just try to overwhelm with men at arms, which... Mm. I think if Lucifron is kind of keeping his army together and just pays attention, he shouldn't be able to lose to just mass men at arms because he has the counter for it, which is the crossbows. Yeah, and he's just going to be able to kite for days uh, and actually spots out a couple of villages up towards that northern position, so going to be forcing him back there. At the same time, Scout going out towards the base of Marine Lord, looking to spot exactly what he's got, but now those five crossbows are going to be looking to take out a lot of work as well. Look at that, just so much damage coming in from those Arbolatrie. Yeah, they're just going to slowly clean up, and uh, I really like the, the walls uh, that he's planting down. Oh, I don't know if you realize that middle wall that he put, there's actually a... Just above that, there's a place that units can go through. Yeah, so he's and not walled all the way across yeah, yet. Yeah, that can be very dangerous. Sometimes when you think you have a full wall, and you're like, I'm safe there, and then a bunch of units come through, and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. So he needs to be uh, careful about that, and we do see Marine Lord getting the site first and then deciding to go for the relics and we do see stone mining from marine lord so mm -hmm. uh yeah i think that keep will be coming shortly are we able to check on his guild halls i'm curious to see what the guild hall currently set to that's the school of cavalry guild hall is on stone stone for marine lord oh, okay, it's getting so he, spicy. he he is going for it yeah. and for luceron we still see food so he actually just took out food out so he is aware that he has uh, uh workers or a guild hall on food and he's just staying with it and uh yeah interesting guild hall on stone so i guess that will just you know enable him to maybe even plop down two keep uh on the middle at the same time so so let, let's say you're in lucifron's position and you do eventually spot those keeps going down are you thinking about imperial to get bombards are you going to be looking at trebuchets what's the go-to there i think you can there's actually multiple ways of dealing with it uh i think you can go imperial um and just go bombards and you'll be able to knock down those keeps super super fast you can go for trebuchet style play uh, you can even try to kind of rush it with a bunch of rams and just a bunch of uh, infantry uh, i think it's very play style dependent or you can actually go for the other player's economy he could go counter-attack in the economy try to kill food gold villages and stuff like that but it seems that he's throwing down more uh, barracks right now, but I'm not sure if he knows what Marine Lord's plan is. Yeah, Marine Lord looking incredibly strong now, picking up some great trades just there on the screen, taking out a huge amount of Arbolatrie uh, with his horsemen. So a nice little switch coming in there from Marine Lord. We did see him putting down a, a couple of barrack or a couple of uh, stables earlier. So now converting that into quite a nice little lead. You can see the military population from Marine Lord almost double that of his opponent. Uh, Arbolatria going to be trying to come back. No Pavise shield getting dropped for these guys. I'm not sure if they've got Gambesons on. Vodka's going to click on one of those Arbolatria right now, and you can see that they've got the six armor. So they do indeed have Gambesons, the upgrade coming through. They're going to be extra, extra tanky when they're going up against these uh, men at arms and falling back towards the town center. You can see he's doing a great job of just picking these guys off one by one. It's so difficult to de deal with these Arbolatria. 
Yeah, so my reload was uh, six workers behind earlier, and now he's only like seven or eight workers behind, so he's actually been killing villagers this whole time. There's been some added arms that mill at the north, denying a couple, and you know, killing a couple of villagers at the farms. And even though there's a second TC, it, it's kind of like sinking a lot of resources into it, but he's staying afloat with Marine Lord's economy that's on one TC. So Marine Lord doing a really good job just denying uh, resources and kind of just denying that second TC from actually coming into uh, play. Yeah, keep in mind he's got the relics as well and the sacred site. So he's got, well, he doesn't actually have the sacred site at the moment. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. It's, it was, okay, it's, it's being selected by our observer vodka. So it comes up on the minimap as white. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, he has got, yeah, now we can see. So he's got a beautiful passive gold trickle that's coming through right now. Um, and yeah, I mean, at this point in time, Marine Lord somehow managing to pull this one back. Yeah, Marine Lord uh, playing, I would say, really well from behind. And Lustron is stabilizing right now. So what's about to happen is he's like, okay, I defended, you know, I got my food eco up, I got some stone, I'm gonna make a keep, and he's gonna go to the middle, and there's gonna be two of them. And this is where the decision has to be made instantly. Like, he knows the sacred side is taken. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's expecting uh, there's uh, villagers for the keep, but he needs to make a decision. Am I going Imperial? Am I going to mass units? Am I going to counterattack? Because the longer you wait, the further behind you get. Yeah. And the less time you have, because that clock is ticking. And that's exactly it. Often we do see players leave it a little bit late. But speaking of leaving it late, got to be careful with that keep. It is slowly but steadily coming up. You can see plenty of villagers down on the base as they get mauled by those men at arms just trying to connect. And now we see the Mangonel coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, we may have ourselves a little bit of a massacre on our hands as unfortunately the villagers take a big hit. Their second shot about to come out. Let's see if they manage to make it inside the town center in time. And all of the villagers do go down. Terrible damage right there, Beastie. Oh, yeah, so the second TC advantage is uh, officially gone. I don't think we need to check worker count. There was a lot of workers dying. And I mean, the thing is, he gets this keep on the middle, right? But what does it do? He doesn't uh, have control of the site. Yeah, so, he, oh, no, 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 the crossbows. Oof. So basically, Marine Lord will get the upgrades on the keep as well. And this um, Lucifer's keep is slowly going to go down. Very, very slowly, but... It doesn't, again, it doesn't do much, right? He, he, it's there, which is great, but every time Lustron tries to maybe recap. Oh, and we see a big Wololo in the wood line. Wow, that is absolutely massive. You can see, oh, Marine Lord. I think he's just tapped out. He's got the victory. It looks like the 3-0, ladies and gentlemen. The Wololo was enough to do it. You can tell by the water bottles, the classic water bottles coming out there. The Wololo to finish the game. Beastie, that was tough for Lucifron. Marine Lord looking in top shape right now. Yeah, those are... Those are some tough games because I feel like he, like Lucifer plays really well, yeah. gets in a good spot, but then just falls apart. Yeah. And what I'm happened? not sure if this is a, a credit to, you know, obviously Marine Lord played really well, but it's one of those where he's he's getting in really good spots. Like, you know, double TC, same castle, age timing. So he's a whole TC ahead. He's going crossbow against men at arms, but somehow just doesn't manage to transition out of it and yep. just takes too much damage. The walls that he put are very, uh, I would call them optimistic because... <laughs> I was, got, I was thinking aggressive, but optimistic is perfect. Optimistic, yeah. I mean, he did the walls, but what did they do, right? He didn't really wall off anything because there were so many holes. Yep. There's so much space. Maybe too greedy on the walls. Maybe if he kind of cut them a little bit shorter, he would be able to secure and not lose the villagers. Uh, but maybe he felt like, oh, I defended first five men in arms. I'll just, you know plop down the walls and it's going to be great but he kept getting harassed he kept getting uh, run bys and lost to many villages in the end yeah it was an incredibly tough game amazing that he managed to pull that game out of the bag i really i've it, it's crazy like as you mentioned going into that game or going into the castle age down a tc and yeah. still managing to equalize it just incredibly well played and absolutely methodical one of the things that we you know, continue to see about Marine Lord is he is just methodical, very safe in his gameplay, very calculated in everything he does, not a lot of mistakes. And as evidenced by the score here, 3 0 to Marine Lord. He's looking in incredible form right now, Beastie. Yeah, well played. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a little bit of an interview that is going to be coming up with our victor. I'm looking towards Nilly, who holds a microphone very optimistically over the head of Marine Lord. Beastie, I'm going to head on over to the casting couch. I'll leave you here comfortably. Unless you'd like to join me.
in the middle. Yeah. Wait, you're beastie. Yeah, you got Marine so Lord. Welcome to the casting couch. Thanks. It is a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. 3 0. Congratulations. Incredibly well played. Mm, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, it was decent. Decent, let's say. A lot of mistakes, I think, but I did, we didn't play on stage since a very long time uh, with Lucy Fon, so I guess after two years, you have to get it back a little bit, you know? During the third game, you were down at Town Centre yeah. going into the Castle Age, and yet you still managed to come out ahead. Mm -hmm. Were you at any point scared in that last game, or did it always feel like it was under your control? I was impressed when he reached Castle because like, he had two TCs and uh, he reached it very really quickly. But at the same time, like, map control on this map is so important because otherwise you're just uh, the, sac the sacred site, right? And then you're dead. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. I should be fine if I just play well. Like, he was slightly ahead, but it was not a, a big lead at all. Just like sometimes in this game, when you have two TC, it can look a little bit weird, right? Like, you have more economy. In the long run, it should be better. But I had, I'm quite sure, better economic upgrades and Obviously, I didn't have a lot of idle time, unlike him, so it was fine. How did you feel game two when you saw Relic slowly disappearing from the map? I mean, <laughs> against Delhi and him against Mongols later on, it's pretty much a free win, like, if you play well, so I just tried to do something different, right? And if it doesn't work, I really don't care, because in my opinion, I can't win against Delhi or against Mongols, so just go next, but it works, so I don't know, like, I felt... Uh, Almost dead when I saw all the league go, but I was like, maybe if I can keep him a little bit at home. My second win condition is to reach Imperial, obviously. So if I can do that, I can win. But in theory, it shouldn't be possible. But after a few mistakes uh, from him, I could capitalize on uh, the fact that Delhi is pretty weak in early castle. In the first game, Abbasid Mira, yeah. it was an interesting build order, an interesting opening from you. You decided to go for complete camel archers and horsemen. Now, Beastie mentioned that this is something that's been sort of taking over the ladder. Yeah. Is this something that you prepared especially for, for this matchup or for this tournament game? Yeah, so like I opened stable before my second TC mm -hmm. and I wanted to punish him for like taking stone, but since he doesn't make wheelbarrow, he actually can drop the second, second TC very quickly. So like usually when I practice, for example, with Beastie, we both go for wheelbarrow. So the second TC is a little bit delayed. But at the same time, it means you are later on stone, so you can actually attack. Mm. But here it wasn't the case, so I don't know. Maybe I didn't uh, prepare well enough. I felt like in the three games, usually in early games, I always get a lead. Here it was pretty even, if not me behind, at least in game two and three. So I feel like I need to prepare a little bit better my early game, and I should be fine. So heading into the next round yeah. tomorrow, you're looking incredibly strong. Who do you want to be up against? <sighs> I don't really care. Uh, like, everyone is good, to be honest. Like, uh, the eight players are pretty much on the same level, so anyone can beat anyone on best of five. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't want to play BC because we practice together, so it's a little bit weird. Mm. But uh, other than that, I don't really care. All right, well, I've got no further questions, BC. Just pick Linux. Everyone pick should just Linux? say they want to play against Linux. Oh, I think Linux is pretty good. I think we underestimate him a little bit. No, so no, Linux is, is a great player. I just like, uh, you know, picking on him because he's just uh, he's a funny guy. Yeah, he is. But uh, last question uh, that I have for you. Um, were you surprised when you saw the second TC in the third game? Because I, I was casting the game and I said I've never seen... French versus French mirror where the player goes for second DC and I, mm -hmm. I thought that the moment you see it you will go castle and he will just kind of be behind but he actually hit castle really fast. Yeah, uh, I mean, I wasn't too surprised because I saw uh, Vortex and Lucifer doing that like uh, maybe two months ago. Mm. So I was like, maybe uh, it's a good idea. And in French mirror, like, things that mana terms are very valuable but obviously you have Arbalesters that are very strong as French mm. and on top of that, if you can make a lot of knights, you can defend against mana terms. So you have two very good options to hold mana terms, unlike other thieves. So, I don't know, I felt like he was in a good position and his second TC was probably a, a good idea. Mm. But I'm not too sure what he did before that because I go to like Wheelbarrow, then I do Pro Scouts. He didn't then get I a Wheelbarrow. Oh yeah, that's... Unlucky. I think that's a... Uh, it's such a small investment, yeah. but I feel like yeah. it's just so big in the long run. Yeah, like, not even the economical, economical part, it's like just they run fast. So like, when you get harassed, they just don't die. So, it's mm. so big. All right. Well, that was absolutely it for me. Beastie, any more questions from you? I'm um, good. Congrats for the win. Thanks. Marine Lord, congratulations. 3 0. You're looking incredibly strong. You head into tomorrow as a favorite. Good luck. Let's go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got a lot of games coming up for you this evening. Uh, we've got a best of five between the Viper and the Muslim. You can see, oh, 
look who we've got right here. It's one wild snake. He's going to be coming right up for you guys. So don't go anywhere. We've got plenty more entertainment for you.